Boy, I, didn't get me after the service. I didn't welcome Ailey. I didn't welcome Ailey. Oh, sorry. Yes. So welcome Ailey, who is who's playing the organ this morning in the absence of Darian, who probably is self isolating yes. as we speak. <laughs> so, welcome. welcome. And thank you very thank much you. for joining with us. The, the Christmas morning service is, of course, a family service. So, please, if you get the chance to open some of your presents before you come, if you're coming, Bring some with you. We can have a bit of a, well, hopefully we'll have a bit of a laugh. And, and if I laugh at your present, and I'm not supposed to, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but bring your presents anyway, and we'll hopefully have a bit of fun in Christmas morning. It'll not be a long service, because I know I, I want to get home and get tore into my turkey, but that's another matter. Yeah. We still ourselves before our call to worship this morning. Let us prepare our hearts as we await the coming of the Lord. Let us watch for the one who heard our cries and shouldered the suffering of our world. Let us anticipate the coming of Christ's eternal world with wholeness, reconciliation and plenty for all. Let us wait in expectation for the day when God's glory is revealed in all its fullness. We sing our praises to the Lord as we sing our opening hymn, hymn 175, Praise, I will praise your Lord.
happening this morning. And I'm sure you've noticed the inclusion of bears this morning. As well as it being the fourth Sunday of Advent, we're also having our nativity this morning. It's slightly different. Unfortunately, I'm getting sick of saying this, but due to restrictions, <laughs> we can only do certain things. So we are having what's called a bear nativity, and it's, most of it is going to be on the screens. So you'll see the nativity story played out with teddy bears. So that's why we've got teddy bears this morning. Or we've got more than teddy bears, we've got lots of different animals with us this morning. So we're going to be doing that. Um, that's going to happen after the sermon and the kids are going to come in and along with Alison, they're going to narrate the story for us. Now, and Marco, Marco astounded me this morning. <laughs> I was walking up quite the thing by and he assaulted me with that Celtic teddy bear. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, like his mother's here to hold it up. Oh. It shows you all are welcome in this place. <laughs> oh. That should be one of the restrictions. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have to be kind, Faye. Just because Mother will win again. <laughs> but first of all, we have our Advent candles to the, the final Advent candle of Advent to light. So I'm going to say again some more words, and then we're going to invite someone up to light like the advent candle. But due to restrictions, <laughs> I'm, I'm not allowed now to go and help them. So I have to stand back here. So Madison's mum's going to bring her up. And Michelle's, it's actually Michelle's going to get a chance to light an advent candle. She's not been one for years, she said. <laughs> so, hear the words of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord sent another message to Ahaz. Ask the Lord your God to give you a sign. It can be from deep in the world of the dead or from high up in heaven. He has answered, I will not ask for a sign. I refuse to put the word to the test. To that Isaiah replied, Listen now, descendants of King David. It's bad enough for you to wear out the patience of people. Do you have to wear out God's patience too? Well then, the Lord himself will give you a sign. A young woman who is pregnant will have a son and will name him Emmanuel. In God's time of love, we will learn to choose what is good. In God's time of love, we will learn to choose what is good. As we wait for God's time, in faith we light the candle of love. Michelle, Will you come up and light our final Mary candle, which is a pink one, and then we can say the words together on the screen after you have lit, lit the candle. So, well, this the spark of the flame. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just Thank you. Well done. Can we say together the words on the screen? Come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Let us pray. With you, God, choice is all. You chose to create life on earth and saw that it was good. Then you let it flow in freedom. You invited people to bear your witness. David, the anxious adulterer. Paul, the stubborn Pharisee. Mary, the quiet teenager. Joseph, the older husband. And to each one, you offered that divine freedom to choose to accept or reject your invitation. And in Jesus, man of Nazareth, you have shown yourself to us in the fullness of your freedom, choosing love over fear, forgiveness in the face of hatred, life out of death, humanity above all. And he pointed us to the one who is good, our God alone. There is no force in you, God. There is only love 
freely offered to be freely rejected or freely received. And for this, for all of this, what can we do but be silent and offer thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, who taught us to say these words together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forget our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever. Amen. Come now to the word of God, and our reading this morning will be read by Floyd. reading comes from the book of Micah, chapter 5, reading verses 2 to 5a. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from the old, from the ancient times. Therefore, Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labour bears a son and the rest of his brothers will return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord, his God. And they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be our peace when the Assyrians invade our land and march through the fortress. The second reading comes from Luke chapter 1, reading verses 39 to 55. At that, at that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped from in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favoured that the mother of my Lord shall come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who believed that the Lord will fulfil his promises to her. And Mary said, For so glorifies the Lord, and the Spirit rejoices in my God, in God my Saviour. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. His holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. Has, he has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in the inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich in away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Amen. <coughs> God Thank you, Robin. We sing together now the our hymn of the, the, the prayer and the story of Mary. Hymn number 286, Tell Out My Soul. Thank you. 
Some of them were quite eager and wanted to get started right away. <laughs> Let's pray. We dedicate our offering and pray for our world, our community and our church. God of glory, we eagerly anticipate the joy-filled celebration of Jesus' birthday party. We recall now in the quiet recesses of our minds the thrill of receiving your message of salvation. As we open ourselves again to the holy wonder, accept our gifts. May the ministries that these gifts support invite others to receive the saving message of the Christ child. In the hushed anticipation of your coming, O oh Lord, Kindle in us the desire to remain awake that we might be ready for your coming and eager to pray. O oh God, in days to come, the mountain of your house will be established and your joy shall reign. We pray for the church that you might teach us your ways and that we might walk in your paths. Come, Lord Jesus, and hear our prayer. Out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and you, O God, shall judge between the nations. We pray for our nation and all nations, that your peace would be manifest in every corner of the earth. Come, Lord Jesus, and hear our prayer. In your kingdom, O Lord, wolves lie down with lambs, and children play with serpents without fear. We pray for the sick, the suffering, and those in distress of any kind, that you would heal all injuries and comfort all grief and settle all wrongs. Come, Lord Jesus, and hear our prayer. In your kingdom, O Lord, even the wilderness and dry land are glad and rejoice. We pray for those who rejoice this week as they celebrate a birthday or a special anniversary, that they might obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing might flee away. Come, Lord Jesus, and hear our prayer. In the fullness of time, O God, you sent your Son to be born of Mary, and his name was Emmanuel, God with us. We thank you for your presence with us and we pray that you might be always present with those whom we love but see no longer. Come Lord Jesus and hear our prayer. Come among us, O God, and hear our prayers so that when your Son Jesus comes among us with great might and in manger mild, we might recognise his face and his voice and come to adore him. Amen. Our next hymn is hymn number 561, Blessed Assurance.
of the cousins, Mary and Elizabeth. It says, Mary entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. The word for house that we find here is used some 2,000 times throughout the Bible. It refers to everything from the house of a peasant, as in this case, to the house of a king, a palace, to the house of God, the very temple itself. It means the structure and building, but it also means the relationships or family that caused the structure to be built and find themselves at home in that place. Just like the house of David or even the house of Windsor. See, Mary entered the house. Now, we don't know the address, only that it's a Judean town in the hill country. It's probably made of stone. A little house built, built on top of and among a lot of other little houses with small courtyards and steep, narrow alleyways winding around them. It has a central room with a hive-shaped oven where pruned olive branches are burning and are fragrant. A pile of dried dung is there for the cooking fire. Rooms are dark and small with high windows for ventilation. A big jug of water stands by the door that someone filled that morning to be used carefully all day long. Nothing is wasted. It's not the kind of house that we know. It doesn't have an address that we know. We do know though that Jesus said, I was a stranger and you welcomed me. Just doesn't say where. Perhaps a lack of familiarity and the absence, absence of being specific can teach us that any place and many places can offer welcome. You see, Mary entered that house. Somehow, she knew or hoped that this was a place where she would be welcomed. Every Sunday, people walk through the doors of a church, this church for instance, because they know, or at least they hope, they will be welcomed. We who have been around churches for a long time know that this is why we are here, to welcome others. But sometimes we get so busy enjoying and welcoming the ones that we know that we forget to welcome the ones that we don't know. We leave it to the newcomers to welcome other newcomers and to form their own wee small groups or Sunday schools classes. Because there's no room. There are no welcome in the others. You see, it takes letting go, making sacrifices, changing to bring new ones in. We think that because we are friendly to our friends, that we're friendly. But in reality, we're not welcoming unless we seek out the ones that we don't know. Members and guests alike, every time we walk into this building and we say, I see that you're here. I'm glad that you're here. And I care that you are here. A newly retired minister once told about his, and using his Sunday freedom from preaching responsibilities to visit churches in his area. He and his wife visited 15 churches. They, of course, they knew how to dress. They knew how to act. But in church after church after church, almost everyone ignored them. There was no welcome. And what would it have been like if we had looked or acted differently from everyone else, he wondered. I could tell you lots of stories about my own experiences of going to other churches, sometimes on holiday, but more especially on training, where people are and were, let's say, less 
than friendly at times. And then you go back the following week as their new trainee minister. That can be fun. <laughs> I was also told a story that I tell every time that I can because I know this is a true story. It's about a friend of mine who was checking out a church that he was going to do pulpit supply in the following week. He went in. <coughs> He sat down. He was then approached by a lady from the choir seats who told him that he was sitting in someone's seat <laughs> and he was going to have to move. He did. But boy, did he have fun with sermon that following week. <laughs> and yes, the people involved did recognise him and of course couldn't apologise enough. But the damage had already been done. A reporter in the US visited a number of churches a couple of years ago to see whether they were actually practicing what they were preaching about the welcoming of strangers. They were not. You see, sometimes people will say, what if I welcome someone who's been a member here longer than I have? Welcome them. Sometimes people say, what if I welcome somebody I've welcomed before and I've forgotten? Welcome them. I think that I can probably guarantee that none of you will have forgotten more names than I do. I'm constantly introducing people who have known each other longer than I've probably been alive. But every now and then, by the grace of God, I get it right. And someone feels welcomed and wanted and it's worth it. It's why we're here. And you see, Mary entered that house. People don't just walk in up to a place of hospitality for no reason. They go because they're in need. We don't know what way Mary needed exactly. We know that she had had a life-changing encounter with an angel. We can imagine her to be perplexed, overwhelmed, frightened, anxious, lonely, confused, thrilled, awed, determined, hopeful, and probably some of all of the above, as is usually the case when one encounters the mystery of God. We know that it causes her to hurry to this house in the Judean town in the hill country. We know that the need for hospitality is no less among us today. The writer and Holocaust survivor Ellie Weasel writes this, Our century is marked by displacements on the scale of continents. Never before have so many human beings fled from so many homes. And Mary entered that house. But no matter how beautiful, comfortable, or well designed and perfectly appointed the house is, it's the people inside who make it welcoming or not. Now, to most people, the word house means a place that we can go into, spend the night, find safety from the dangers of the dark. And it wouldn't be too much of a strain to assume that Mary needs shelter that a friend could give. But she also needs the blessing that a family can offer. And to make a place hospitable, we must first of all, make room in our hearts. It's the practice day by day by day of love and generosity that makes our hearts spacious enough to make our places welcome enough. Many churches have what some call hospitality groups that meet in members' homes they talk about many things, but they also discuss how their homes and their churches 
can be places where people feel wanted and loved and safe. Hospitality in our homes, you see, is more complicated in some ways than it used to be even a few generations ago. But the, the, the pastor of a thriving inner city church in Los Angeles claims that the front door of the home is the side door of the church. I find that an amazing statement. The front door of the home is the side door of the church. I've also heard of some places renewing the practice of festive Sunday dinners, or at least they were before restrictions. It doesn't take too much extra preparation to include an extra person or two at the table. Families could could be sure to invite a few extra people to holiday gatherings and special events. We can adopt one another into our families. You see, this is not about entertaining. This is hospitality, the work, the joy of God. Someone once said, hospitality is the first step towards dismantling the barriers of the world. It is the way we turn a prejudiced world around one heart at a time. Hospitality binds the world together. Mary entered the house and the grace of God grew. So let's make sure our doors are always open. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will be singing O Little Town of Bethlehem in a second. Uh, we're just going to sing that now. And as we do, the kids will come back and they will then <coughs> take over the rest of the service. I've got half a shift on today. But I'm going to go and sit in the congregation. O Little Town of Bethlehem.
say that we have raised, I have good news for you, which will make everyone happy. The angel said, Today your Saviour was born in the town of David. He is Christ the Lord. The, an the angel said, You will find a baby wrapped in cloths lying in a manger. <coughs> The shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem and see what the Lord has told us about. The shepherds went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judah during the region of King Herod. When Jesus was born, some wise men from the east of came to Jerusalem. Herod had a secret meeting with the wise men and learned from them that the exact time that they saw the star. When the wise men saw the star again, they were filled with joy. The wise men saw Jesus with his mother Mary and they bowed and worshipped him. The wise men gave Jesus gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. God told the wise men not to go back to Herod, so they returned home by a different route. So that concludes our dear nativity, so all that's left is to say, take this opportunity to say thank you all very much for your prayers and support during this time when we've been able to gather together again and to wish each and every one of you a happy and blessed Christmas. Apologies, we'll now continue our worship by singing question page 83 to come and join the celebration.
said this to you. Loving Heavenly Father, as a tiny child, you came to us to bring reconciliation between men and yourself. So we pray for all those who do not know you as their Lord and Saviour, that they may come to know you as such, and for our brothers and sisters in Christ throughout the world, suffering persecution or worse. You came to us to bring healing, so we pray for all those suffering in mind and body throughout the world. You came to us to bring peace, so we pray for all those suffering through war and violence throughout the world, and for the peacemakers of this world. You came to us to bring justice for all, so we pray for the voiceless and marginalised in society throughout the world, and for those in positions of power to be inspired to work, to, to work towards justice for all. Mm. You came to us to show your great love for each of us, so we pray for all those who feel lonely, unloved, confused, especially at this time. You knew no home or wealth of your own, so we pray for all those without home or shelter, and who face perilous journeys to flee from danger throughout the world, and those living in poverty throughout the world. You created in us full of beauty and wonder, so we pray for forgiveness that we have not been the good stewards you meant us to be. You came to us in a place facing uncertain times, and as we go into Christmas and the coming year facing more uncertainty, we humbly come before you as our rock and redeemer, in whose hands we can safely place all our concerns and joys, with this prayer, in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. That was fantastic. <laughs> well done to everyone. Well done to Alison. Well done to all of us. Well done to our boys. It wasn't easy. It was a kind of last minute thing that we had to get together because we weren't sure what we were going to be allowed and what we weren't due to restrictions. <laughs> I don't know whether I actually like or hate saying that anymore, but due to restrictions. But anyway, we are really blessed and thankful that we have kids who will come up and do the narration. And we are very blessed that we've got Alison who will be very patient and help them to do it. So thank you very much. On behalf of us all here, a big huge thank you. And all that's left now is the benediction. Could you please stand for the benediction? <laughs> Go now to love and to serve the Lord, and the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you all now and forevermore. <laughs>